Hey, welcome back to Finding My Wings. We've got a really controversial little product here today. And so this is the Imgen Pedal Pro uh, Pedal Commander type device. Throttle Commander takes over your throttle, uh, really changes on a drive-by-wire tire. When you go to say 20% throttle, what does that actually tell the computer? How quickly does it tell that computer that? And from going zero to 20, how many pieces of resolution were there in between? Um, so from the reviews and from the global community, this seems like a really great solution. If you're not really ready to tune your car, but you do notice that it's laggy, uh, something like a turbocharged car, whether it's a BRZ or an STI, uh, you'll notice a big difference because a lot of your turbo leg will be kind of taken care of off the bat. Of course, this is not a turbo leg solution overall, but it just adds a little bit more control and ability to modify how your car responds. Things like Audis and BMWs a lot of the time these days uh, do have something like this built in where you have a sport mode, comfort mode, gas mode, whatever. Uh, and this has, I believe, like 17 modes in it. Uh, so you can go from better fuel economy all the way up to, oh my god, I pressed the pedal, I'm already at my red line. Uh, so I got a lot of, a lot of stuff here uh, for a plug and play unit. <laughs> Try to get this out of here without breaking anything. So the actual unit itself, pretty simple. Up button, down button, mode button, and that's about it. Um, so this really goes right in line with your pedal. Uh, so you take it out, so your pedal actually goes into this guy, and then this guy goes back into your computer. Uh, when it's done, it's relatively plug and play. Uh, so you can see it's just kind of typical throttle connectors here. Um, our actual port, I don't know everything about this. This looks like it's actually going to go onto my OBD2 uh, with two prongs and then a wire to actually wire it in. Uh, let's see what this says. It's got a big warning here, nice. That's how you know you got a good part if there's a big warning on it. Hoping one day we get a turbo and it just says, warning, do not install this, you could die. Read before installing. Okay, that's fair. Well, we'll get into this. Uh, we'll see how it installs, we'll do a little bit of a test, see if it's worth the money, see if it bricks my ECU, I don't know. Reviews on this thing are all over the place, uh, but it's something I've definitely noticed on the car, is that with 200 horsepower in a stock car that weighs about 26, 2700 pounds, uh, it could feel a little bit responsive, and I'm not really ready to tune or supercharge or do a full stroker cam kit or anything like that on the car at this point in time, it's still a daily driver in the winter in Canada. So let's see what we can do with this thing. All right, hello everybody. The first step to install this engine throttle controller is of course, disconnect your negative terminal. Now after this, you wanna wait about 10 minutes for the computer to actually discharge. Uh, you're gonna to wanna to reset basically the entire computer doing this. And if you don't do these steps properly or follow the instructions that came in your book, uh, you could end up with some codes being thrown. So be very careful, make sure you give lots of time to discharge, and don't jump into anything without reading the instructions. Alright, so my battery's been disconnected for well over 10 minutes. Now we're just going to disconnect this wire at the top. So where that actually plugs in, kind of in the center of my screen there, uh, you're actually just going to disconnect that wire. It's a simple pop, just grab it and it should pop right off. Alright, so once that wire is off, I'm actually going to do the cheap way to do this, uh, which is this OBD adapter here. Uh, so I'll hardwire it in more if this is a good device, but for now, just find your OBD, plug it in. Make sure it's nice and firm in there, you're not crushing any of the wires, and we'll cable manage this in a bit. Uh, next I'm going to take the actual unit here uh, and simply plug it into the appropriate port here. Alright, so now the car is still disconnected. The throttle wire is disconnected up there, as you can see. This is now plugged into our OBD, so we should have power. And our display is now connected. So the last is this harness, so it's literally that one end replaces the end that went on your throttle, and one end replaces the end that touched the wire going into that. So this is basically a splice in between the wire uh, on your throttle. So simply plug this into the throttle, plug this into the wire, and you take this white one and plug it into the control box here. 
And that should really be the end of the engine install. We now have to sync it, uh, which I'll show in just a second. All right, now that the hardware and wires are installed, I am simply going to put the battery terminal back on. Now, do not start the car. You're just going to put it in ACC2 uh, and do the sync process, which I'll walk through in a second. Let's sync it up. Look at those salty speed lines. This is from dirty winter driving. You can see where the aerodynamics of this car goes. I have some ideas of what to do with this aerodynamics line right here, uh, but we'll get that in later videos. Now let's sync the engine controller. So your instructions should have everything that you need. Basically put it in ACC2, let it hold mode until it gets to zero. Uh, once you release you should get an L. At that point do not press the throttle but you can press up or down and you should get a blink and some lights on uh, which means it's synced at zero. Next you'll place it 100% so all the way to the floor uh, and then you should be able to just hit up or down again, get that same sync, and it should be done. You'll know what works is if you can hit mode and you can actually switch between modes. If it's staying in NOR, you did something wrong, disconnect your battery and start again. Okay, ne negative terminal is back on. Uh, we did a really half-assed wiring job here just to make sure that everything actually gets in place. Uh, we'll test it just sitting in the car here, and then if it's all good, we'll go back and cable manage it all. Okay, everything is back. It's gonna go on. Alright, we're in on mode now. So our first step, foot not on anything, is I'm gonna hold this until it counts down. Alright, we have our L. Uh, so at this point, I'm literally just gonna hit up. Here we go. Now I'm going to put it all the way down, and I'm going to hit up again. Now we're back at zero. And so now you can see that as I move my foot here, it's registering what's actually going on. And I can now switch it between eco, normal, and sport. Uh, so I'm going to keep it in normal mode here. Uh, everything seems okay. The th cable management's a little bit dangerous the way I have it right now, so I'm going to cable manage this a little bit. Uh, not fully permanent, but just enough that I can take it for a drive. And let's see if we feel a difference in some of these modes. Okay, for a start, be aware of any codes that come up. If so, definitely disconnect your battery and redo the sync and install process. You don't have to remove the hardware, um, but definitely pull that negative off of your battery and actually resync the device. It should just allow you to resync it without doing anything special. Uh, you'll literally just hold that button until you get the countdown again, and you should be good to go. Uh, I just kind of got the wires out of the way of my feet, at least. Uh, so let's turn it on and see if we get any issues. cold in Canada today as you can see actually it's just zero today not bad but I'm gonna let the car sit for a couple minutes relearn itself uh, mess with a couple of my settings like where my red line limiter is set uh, and then we'll get on the road and see how this thing does all right we're warmed up here we'll see if it all registers so it should show up here It's showing up. I'm probably just gonna start it in sport mode and just just gave three. It's a good number. Uh, and see if we notice any difference. It'll take a little while for the car to relearn it, so I'd appreciate it relearning uh, somewhere in the sport mode at least. I'm gonna try to mount my camera to go for a drive and record a little bit, but it might be hard. It's just me today. So I ended up putting this just near the fog light and trunk toggle. Uh, see, so right now you can really only see the number coming up, um, but it's easy to reach. It's within view, so I can actually see it while I'm driving and know what mode I'm in. Okay, car seems to be running okay. Put it in reverse. The reverse override is not set up yet. 
so it's actually in sport mode in reverse too. Doesn't feel too different in reverse. Between the car relearning its environment. And the computer relearning everything. I feel like there's a bit of lag, but I usually get that. No, honestly, it doesn't really feel drastically different. I know Sport 3 isn't the touchiest mode, but I'm gonna keep it in it for a little bit just to see where it goes. So I'm noticing that the difference in throttle is notable. And so if I say floor it and then come off, I feel the car noticeably lurch. And I know an issue with naturally aspirated modern cars is that you have an electronic throttle body that's a little bit laggy and it's not necessarily the response that you want. Uh, so that's actually kind of cool. When I let off the gas, it's good. And of course, throttle blipping down makes it very easy. You have to relearn it a little bit in your head because it's so much more sensitive. But I'm actually going to pull up to this stop and set it to Sport 9 mode and see if we have any more of a difference. Okay, Sport 9. Woo! Sport 3 and Sport 9, very notable. All of a sudden we have a very aggressive power curve. In this car, because it's still very low power, I can't bet it's any bit more powerful than a stock GT86 with the better manifold on it. It just feels like the car is more powerful because you go 30% throttle down and you're getting closer to maybe what it was getting you at 50 or 60%. And it just feels like you have more power by that relative difference. I also do feel like I have a little bit more control, like my new changes in throttle are more noticeable. The laggy kind of dynamic curve that they put on the car from factory just left a lot to be desired there, but... Overall, it does feel more responsive, and it feels more powerful. I know it's a kind of a cheat, as it's not actually more responsive. But relative to where your foot is, it makes you feel like you got a faster car. Imagine if you had a turbo car, you'd be getting spooled pretty quick. Even in sixth gear, I put it in a little bit and it's actually got power. Downshifts are really nice and smooth. This is cool. I feel like when I blip the throttle in a downshift, it's closer to what I expect the blip to get me. Alright, I'm going to quickly just use normal mode see what it's all about. So I'm in normal mode now. It now feels like a really laggy throttle compared to Sport 9. 
the one thing I noticed in this car was it felt like a low resolution throttle for some reason. It just minute changes didn't change much. And I feel like I can feel all those small changes a bit better now. But it feels identical to stock. So I'm gonna pull over and set it to a comfort mode, or an eco mode, sorry. And I'm gonna go somewhat low, I'm just gonna go eco three. And uh, literally you just hit mode. And then hit it until it goes to three. There's seven eco modes and nine sport modes. Higher the level on sport, the more sensitive it is. The higher the number on eco, the less sensitive it is. Oh, nice. And we even got a... Another Subi in front of us. All right, yeah, eco mode is eco mode. This feels like lag! But I can see this being very nice for cruising. If I move my foot around, I get really high resolution, really low sensitivity control. So eco mode would be really great for just getting minute throttle control, uh, especially on long roads and trips. I do see a pretty good fuel economy number coming up right now, considering what gear I'm in and where I'm driving and how fast, etc. So I just shifted on the fly because we got the Subi in front of us with some mods on it. And I went back into Sport 9 without coming to a stop, and that was like car drugs. It went from all of a sudden, if I touch the pedal, it barely does anything, to if I touch the pedal, I am lurching forward, <laughs> very aggressively. Overall, this thing is cool. I think, the issue with the device like this is if you plan to tune your car. You're better off just tuning your car. You can modify throttle control and a bunch of stuff uh, on Ecutech and, oh, here we go, another Subi. Ecutech uh, and the OFT tablets, I do allow, believe, allow you to modify your throttle response. And so for the price, this was like 270, 280 Canadian. Uh, just put that money into a good tune. I notice it's a lot harder to know what gear I'm in because you learn this car and you learn the gears and you learn the ratios and now they're all off. So this is gonna be a whole new learning experience, which is exactly what I wanted. More control, more potential, more learning. That's life, a lifelong learning. So thank you for watching, Finding My Wings. I'm Jesse, I appreciate your views. Please leave comments. Uh, if this sucked, I'm gonna get some friends to help me actually edit these videos in the future, uh, so they can be a little bit higher quality for you. But I appreciate anybody that was watching. I hope there was some value in this for you. Uh, and overall, this in-gen throttle controller definitely does what it says on the box. Gives you more control as far as being able to set it into an eco or sport mode. It gives you more resolution, it feels like, on a normal uh, mode. So just compared to stock, it feels like if you move it, say, a tenth of an inch, you get a little bit more resolution in there. So there's more notches, there's more control etc. however you want to say it. It just gives you a little bit more minute control through that digital analog converter. Uh, overall though, uh, for the value, it's actually kind of low value. If you really don't want to tune your car, this is a great option. If you're planning on tuning your car at all, tune your car. This will come basically on the tune. Thanks for watching.